In this section, we're going to look at matrix operations. So we're going to look at um, operations on matrices in a more general format than what we looked at before. So we're getting into chapter two, lots of uh, matrix operations, lots of uh, things to deal with with respect to matrices. So first off, let's talk about a little bit of the notation. We've already seen some of this. We know an M by N matrix has M rows and N columns. And what I've displayed for you is a three by four matrix. So we have three rows, four columns. And notice the notation on the entries. A sub one comma one, that is for first row, first column. A sub 1 comma 3, that is standing for the entry in our first row and our third column. And you can go through all of these. A 3 comma 2, third row, second column. And so we're going to start using that notation from here on out, the A I J, as the entry in the row I and column J. All right? So let's talk quickly about types of matrices, some just general types of matrices. And the first thing I want to point out are these diagonal entries. OK, we call these uh, if we are A sub I, I. So for instance, the 1, 1 entry, the 2, 2 entry, the 3, 3 entry. So if you're in row I and column I, that is a diagonal entry. And we say that a matrix is diagonal if those entries are real numbers and every single other entry is a zero. So basically, if we have zeros everywhere except possibly the diagonal, then we call that a diagonal matrix. Now, the vast majority of diagonal matrices, in fact, in this class, if I say diagonal matrix, it will be a square matrix. And what I mean by square is that it will have the same number of rows and columns. So it'll be N by N, okay? So diagonal matrix, matrix excuse me, will have possibly numbers, uh, possibly non-zero numbers in the 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, the 4-4, four, four, et cetera, et cetera, spot. But everywhere off of the diagonal, it will have zeros. Now, other types of matrix matrices that we're going to look at, the first is the zero matrix. The zero matrix is pretty self-explanatory. A zero matrix is a matrix where every single entry is zero. All right? By the way, a zero matrix is diagonal because on the diagonals, you can have zeros. But you know, off, off the diagonals, obviously, there's going to be zeros. So a zero matrix has all zeros. And then the identity matrix is a diagonal matrix with ones on the main diagonal and zeros elsewhere. So basically, we've seen this before, the identity matrix. We call it I sub N. So the identity matrix is a type of diagonal matrix, specifically the type where we have ones on the diagonal and zeros elsewhere. Now we're going to start looking at operations on matrices. And the first operation is going to be addition. Now, when we add matrices, the addition is going to be entry-wise, just like when we added vectors. OK, so in fact, if you think back to adding vectors, well, adding vectors was a special case of adding matrices. OK, so what we're going to do is add things entry wise. So the 1, 1 entry of our first matrix and the 1, 1 entry of our second matrix are going to add up to give us the 1, 1 entry of our sum. The 1, 2 entry and the 1, 2 entry are going to add up and give you my sum. So you look at each entry, or excuse me, each uh, corresponding entry, add them up, and then that will give you your sum. Now, one thing that you'll find out when you add matrices 
is that matrices have to have the same number of rows and columns in order for you to be able to add them. So for instance, if I have a two by three matrix and a two by two matrix, I cannot add them. The sum of those is undefined. All right, so in order to add matrices, I have to have the same number of rows and columns. And that's analogous to what we did with vectors as well. When we added vectors, if you recall, we had to have the same number of rows. Whoops. All right. Now, the other operation we had with vectors is the operation of scalar multiplication. And so we're going to have that with matrices as well. Again, vectors are just a special case of matrices. So we can extend the idea of scalar multiplication of vectors to scalar multiplication of matrices in the following way. So what we do is we take a scalar times a matrix. So in this case, we took five times that matrix you see there. And basically, that scalar is going to multiply every single entry by the number five. Or excuse me, yeah, in this case, the number five. But in more general terms, scalar multiplies times every single entry. Okay, so whenever you have scalar multiplication, it's basically very similar to what we did with vectors. Five times every single entry will give you a result. Now, we can combine these, and we can take, for instance, linear combinations of matrices. What I'd like you to do is take a moment and try to calculate the following sums and uh, subtractions with matrices. So push pause on the video and go ahead and calculate those. Hopefully, you went ahead and did that. Um, let's go ahead and show you how that's done um, by hand. We go 4 times that first matrix. So I multiply each entry by 4. So 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. 4 times 4 is a 16. 2 times 4 is 8. Hopefully I don't miss one. 4 times 3 becomes 12. 4 times 5 becomes 20. Oops. That's what you get when you multiply 4. Then we're going to take 6 times each entry. 6 times negative 2 is negative 12. 6 times 4 is 24. 6 times 0 is 0. 6 times 7 is 42. No. There we go. Uh, 6 times 4 24. 6 times 9, and there we go. So we multiply by those scalars. This is what we get. And now all we have to do is entry-wise add them. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, if you add the entries, we notice that both of these are 3 by 2 matrices. So when you add the entries, you're still going to get 3 by 2. Hopefully, I don't make a silly calculation mistake, but 4 plus negative 12 is negative 8. Negative 4 plus 24 is 20. 16 plus 0 is 16. 8 plus 42 is 50. 12 plus 24 gives you 36. And then 20 plus 54 gives you 74. All right. So the first calculation would have given you this matrix. Hopefully you got that matrix. Uh, again, try it again if you didn't. Now, on our next problem, it's the same concept. Now, you can distribute this negative n with a 3, or you can um, keep the negative on the outside. It really doesn't matter. Uh, the main point is scalar multiplication, multiply each matrix. So when I multiply the first matrix by 2, I get 8, 10, 6, negative 8. When I multiply the second matrix, I'm going to distribute the negative 3 
So we're going to take 1 times negative 3, and I'll call that negative 3. Negative 3 times 5 is negative 15. Negative 3 times 0 is 0. Negative 3 times 7 is negative 21. All right. And then we go ahead and entry-wise add. So scalar multiply each term, then entry-wise add. When I entry-wise add, we should end up with 5, negative 5, 6, and negative 29 as the entries of my final 2x2 two two matrix. All right. So that's the idea of um, calculating all that by hand. Now, one other thing that you can do is you can utilize the calculator to do this. If you don't feel comfortable with doing all those entries and things like that, you could identify, well, my original matrix. I think it's still there. My original matrix 4, 5, 3, negative 4. Identify that as matrix A. And then 1, 5, 0, 7. Identify that as matrix B. So utilizing our calculator, we could enter those two matrices into our calculator and have our calculator do the majority of the work for us. Now, actually, in a problem like this, it's actually quicker to do it by hand, probably for most people. But if we get into some really big matrices, maybe it is easier to enter it in the calculator. So let me show you how to do that. Um, our standard matrix menu that we always use, edit. I'll call that first matrix, um, two by two matrix, uh, matrix A. That was four, five, three, and negative four. Oops. Negative four. There we go. And then go back into the matrix menu, and we're going to edit matrix B. And when you have this, two by two, uh, matrix B, just as a reminder, was one, five, zero, and seven. Okay, one, five, oh, seven was matrix B. So if I go back to the home screen, I could take two multiplied times matrix A minus three multiplied times matrix B. Hit enter. And sure enough, five, negative five, six, negative 29 is what the calculator gives me as well. So you can use the calculator. It's actually a little bit more cumbersome. But uh, if you want to check your work and make sure that you know you didn't make a silly calculation mistake, then sometimes that's fairly beneficial. All right. But again, we're getting the same thing out either way. Now, I'd like you to push pause on the video and go ahead and try these two problems. Hopefully you did that. Again, if you haven't, uh, go ahead and try that. So let's open up this first problem here. 2 times this matrix uh, minus 3 times this matrix plus 8 times that matrix. 2 times my first matrix gives me 4, 2, 2, 2. That'll get rid of the scalar out front. Minus 3 times this second matrix, you get a negative 3, negative 18, negative 3, and then negative 21. And then the last matrix, we're going to take an 8, multiply it in. 8 times 0 is 0. 8 times 3 is 24. 8 times 2 is 16. 8 times 1 is 8. And then we can add all these up. Now, nicely, all of these are the same size, so we got a 
2 by 2, a 2 by 2, and a 2 by 2. So when you add them up, we just add in oops, all of the entries. Excuse me. So that first entry in the first row, first column of 4, first row, first column of negative 3, first row, first column of 0, gives me a 1, 2, minus 18, plus 24, is going to give me an 8. Hopefully I don't make any mistakes here. 2, plus negative 3, plus 16, is 15. And then 2, minus 21, plus 8, is going to be minus 11. So as you go and do this, you can do this for as many matrices, as many scalars, whatever scalars we want, um, whatever matrices we want, anything. Um, the numbers don't matter. Okay. What does matter is that we have the same number of rows and columns. So in this case, we have two rows. We have two columns in each matrix. Therefore, we can add them up. Now, that's different with the second one. The second one says, what's the uh, answer here? And honestly, this is just undefined. The numbers of rows and columns don't match up. You could do the scalar multiplication, but it's kind of a useless um, exercise in this case because we know that the matrices are not going to match up in terms of numbers of rows and numbers of columns. So that's undefined, and then we can move on from there. So if you ever get one that you know your rows and columns don't match up, just go ahead and write down undefined. Now what we're going to do is look at um, some matrix properties. You'll notice that we talked about some properties of vectors um, in the last chapter, and a lot of these are going to look familiar as well as they should because vectors are just a special case of matrices. So what we'll see is that when you're adding matrices, as long as you can, as long as they all have the same size, okay, that's up here. It says as long as A, B, and C are matrices of the same size, you know, same number of rows, same number of columns, and then R and S are our real numbers. As long as they're the same size, matrix addition is going to be commutative. So A plus B is the same as B plus A. Matrix addition is going to be associative. A plus B plus C is the same thing as A plus B plus C. If you ever have a zero matrix, then when you take a matrix and add the zero matrix, it doesn't change. Think about that, adding each entry of this to zero, adding a zero to each entry of this doesn't change anything. And then here's probably the two most important parts is that just like vector and scalar multiplications are scalars with matrix, multiplication interaction is going to work in the distributive way that the real numbers do. So we have these two distributive properties that if you take a real number times the sum, that's the same as the real number times the matrix A plus real number times matrix B. And then if you add the two real numbers, you could have distributed the matrix multiplication into those scalars and then added. Okay. Also, notice that if you wanted to, you can multiply a single scalar and then by another scalar, or you can just multiply the two scalars together and multiply the matrix there. Okay. So again, it's those are the properties that we want. Those kind of come out of the fact that we're dealing with real number entried um, matrices. Now here. Here is the brunt of this section, okay? The brunt of this section is about matrix multiplication, all right? Now, it turns out if we have two matrices, we can multiply them. Now, we saw how to multiply a vector times a matrix, 
in the last chapter. So we will go over that again once we get into some examples. But that sets the framework for matrix multiplication um, in general. Okay, so imagine that my matrix B has a certain number of columns. Okay, we'll call it P columns, but it has a bunch of columns here. And I want to multiply A times B. Well, basically what I'm going to do is I want to multiply my matrix A by each of those columns individually. Now, if you think about, if you recall back to what uh, a matrix times a vector was, the number of entries in each vector had to be the same as the number of columns in A. So if you'll notice, we said A is an M by N matrix, and B would have had to be an N times P matrix for this whole system to work. Okay, Otherwise, we don't get the same size. So the number of columns in A has to be the same as the number of rows in B. Okay, But basically, it's just we're taking a matrix times our first column, then a matrix times our second column, then a matrix times our last column, and we're putting them in order. So the outcome of this multiplication will be a single column vector. The outcome of this multiplication will be a single column vector, and so on and so forth. And the outcome of this multiplication will be a single column vector. So we're going to get P column vectors uh, in our final matrix product. So basically take each column of B and pretend it's a vector and multiply A times each vector. Okay. And this is what I just said. So if we're going to multiply the number of columns in A must match up with the number of rows in B in order for um, these multiplications individually to work out. All right. So let's go ahead and do a calculation here. I'll do this um, with you. But I just want you to notice before we even get started that the number of columns in this first matrix is 2. The number of rows in this second matrix is two. So we have two columns and then two rows. And so that is sufficient to get a result. All right. So the columns over here and the rows over here have to match up. Notice that obviously in order to multiply, the matrices do not have to be the exact same dimensions. All right, so this one is a different dimension than that one, and that's perfectly fine. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do this multiplication, and then uh, I'll show you another sort of uh, technique after this one that might save us a little bit of time, but might not either. So take these two matrices. We want to multiply them. OK, that's going to force me to multiply this matrix, which I'll call A just because it's the first one, times each column. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create one matrix. Well, that's a very small matrix. So let's make that a little bit bigger. OK, one matrix where the first column is going to be matrix A multiplied times the vector 3, 6. Now, that's going to give me out one column. We'll calculate that in a second. But I want to say this before I move on. My second column will be that same matrix times the vector negative 2, negative 1. Um, putting these fairly far, far apart, just so we can see it, but that's the idea, okay? 
And so if you remember how to multiply this, I'm going to do this kind of on its own, this multiplication on its own, just hopefully to remind you. What we would do is take 3 times this first column plus 6 times the second column. So 3 times the first column, 6 times the second column. And I'm going to write that out in a way uh, that's going to seem a little bit funny right now, but that's perfectly OK. I'm going to leave the, so 3 times the first column is going to give you 4 times 3, 4 times 3, plus when I, since I'm going to be adding that second column, it's going to be 6 times the second column, so plus 2 times 6. Hopefully this makes sense. Um, these, this first product will be coming from the 3 times the first column, and then I'm going to have to add it to 6 times the second column. So we get negative 2 times 3 as the first column, 5 times 3, And then when we add it to what we're going to get result in, 3 times 6, and 6 times, or 1 times 6. That's maybe a better way to put it. Everything's in order now. Okay. So what we're going to end up with as the first col column of our matrix is a column that looks like 12 plus 12, negative 6 plus 18, 15 plus 6. So our first column is going to be 24, 12, 21. All right. Now we're going to do the exact same thing for this multiplication, the second column, too. We take and we would write out, uh, hopefully this all makes sense, leaving off 4 times negative 2, negative 2 times negative 2, five times negative two. That would be my first column times negative two plus my second column times negative one. So two times negative one plus three times negative one plus one times negative one. Okay, now that's going to yield out, oops, that's going to yield out the following numbers. So that we get negative 8 minus 2, that's a negative 10, negative 4 minus 3 is a negative 7. And negative 10 minus 1 is a negative 11. Now, look at, all, look at what we did there. Okay, we took um, all of these things. We've created two columns. And so what we're saying is that if you multiply these two matrices together, you are going to end up with a result. which is going to be a 3 by 2 matrix. In the first column, we're going to have 24, 12, 21. And in the second column, we're going to have negative 10, negative 7, and negative 11. 
Okay, so that's the product of those two matrices. Now, what we did there eventually is our, we were kind of stumbling upon this matrix multiplication technique. It's what we call the row column rule for matrix multiplication. And what it says is that the ij entry of the product will be a sum of the products of corresponding entries from row i in matrix A and column j in matrix B. You can see the, uh, what do we call it, the fancy subscripts here. It's fairly cumbersome looking at it this way. But that's what I was doing in each of those entries when I was dealing um, with the previous example. So think about what this is saying. It's saying if you were looking for the 1-1 one, one entry, what you should have done is you should have taken and looked at row 1, and then multiplied it by column one, right? So if I was looking for the one, one entry, what I would do is I'd take four times three plus two times six. Four times three plus two times six, and gave, gave me that 24. If I were going to be looking for the Entry in row one, but in the second column, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take row one again, oops, row one again, he's not cooperating, and then I would have multiplied times column number two, all right? So if I was going to be looking for, again, row 1, column 2, I would have taken row 1, 4 times negative 2, plus 2 times negative 1. Notice what the entry in 4 times negative 2 plus 2 times negative 1 gave me the entry in row 1, column 2. All right? And so basically what people do is they do this little trick where they just keep taking each row and a lot of people think about it as turning it 90 degrees. So take a 4, 2, and think about turning it 90 degrees. So it multiplies times 3, 6. That'll give you the first entry of your first row. Then take 4, 2. Flip it 90 degrees, multiply it by negative 2, negative 1. That will give you your second entry of your first row. And then you go back and you do the exact same thing for your second row. So we take my second row here. I turn it 90 degrees and I take negative 2 times 3 plus 3 times 6. That will give me my first entry. And then I do, then once I get the first entry, I'll get my second entry by taking negative 2 times negative 2 plus 3 times negative 1. All right, think about that just for a second. So again, we've taken row 2 of matrix A, multiply it co times column 2 of matrix B. That should give our resulting 2, 2 entry. And our 2, 2 entry, so row 2, column 2, was a negative 7. And we got that precisely by taking negative 2 times negative 2 plus 3 times negative 1. Okay, oh, you know what? I screwed that up, didn't I? Ha oh, ha, mistake, mistake, mistake. 
I apologize. Somebody should have caught me. But there it is. Okay. No, I should go there. All right. So that's this matrix multiplication technique. Okay. So rows from A are going to multiply times columns from B. And when we multiply a row by a column, we're going to add up all the entries. And that's going to give me the entry, which is in row I and column J of the product matrix. Okay. So if you want, go ahead and cal try to calculate that all. I was kind of doing that. But I will uh, try to go ahead and do that again. So push pause on the video and just take your time and go through each row times each column, each row of matrix A times each column of matrix B, where this first is A and the second is matrix B. Now, so hopefully you went ahead and did that. I'm going to do that on my own here. And one of the things that people sometimes uh, initially struggle with is, I know I'm going to multiply two matrices. What are the dimensions that I'm going to get out here? And the easy way to remember this is to just look at your first matrix and your second matrix. We have a first matrix that has three rows and two columns, and we're multiplying that by a matrix which has two rows and two columns. So we're multiplying a three by two, uh oh, by a two by two. All right, so it's a three by two matrix for matrix A and a two by two matrix for matrix B. Not very big, there we go, so that's better. So a three by two and a two by two. It turns out that we said that the number of columns here has to match up with the number of rows here to make it work. We know that, therefore, the inside pieces have to match up, these, this two and that two. And we've also said that each entry of the product will come from a row of matrix A times a column of matrix B. That means we're going to have, in our product, we're going to have three rows and two columns. Notice what we did there. Basically, we eliminate the middle two numbers. So this was three by two, this was two by two. The twos in the middle get canceled out, and I know my resulting matrix is going to be a three by two matrix. All right, so that's just a little trick um, if you want to do that. And that would work for anything. If we had a three by 12 matrix, and it was being multiplied by a 12 by 15 matrix. Well, I know my resulting matrix would have been 3 by 15. Okay? So no matter what numbers you use, you can cancel out those two middle ones and figure out what the dimensions should be of the resulting matrix. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to do this each entry. So this is the 1-1 one, one entry of my resulting product. We know that's going to come from taking row 1 times column 1. Row 1 of matrix A times column 1 of matrix B. So I can just write that out as 4 times 3 plus 2 times 6. And whatever I get as a result, is going to be the entry here. 
Now, it doesn't matter if you want to go to the right and do the next entry, or if you want to go down and do the next entry, you got to hit all, well, in this case, all six entries have to be obtained at some point. So let's go to the right in this case. Row 1 multiplied times column 2, 4 times negative 2 plus 2 times negative 1. Then I go down to my next row and I multiply those by the columns. So my next row is negative 2, 3. We're going to take negative 2 times 3. Again, the negative 2 is multiplying times this 3. This 3 is going to multiply multiplying by that 6. So plus 3 times 6. Then I'll move over second row, second column. Negative 2 times negative 2. This is where I screwed up on earlier. So don't. 3 times negative 1. I think I screwed up on that a couple of times, but that's okay. All right. 5, 1 times 6, 3. 5 times 3. 1 times 6. 5 times 3 plus 1 times 6. Add them up. And then 5, 1 times negative 2, 1. 5 times negative 2 plus 1 times negative 1. Okay. And then when we simplify that, um, I'm just going to copy and paste so we can simplify it a little bit easier. That's 12 plus 12. That gives me 24. We're going to, I'll move over here. That's a negative 8 minus 2, which is a negative 10. We get negative 6 plus 18. That gives me a 12. Negative 2 times negative 2 gives you a positive 4. Let me just write that. Plus negative, oops, plus negative 3 is going to give you a positive 1. See, I screwed up on that a couple of times. 15 plus 6 is 21. Sometimes I'm going too fast for myself. And then negative 10 minus 1 is a negative 11. Okay? So this is the resulting matrix. And without my screw up, I had screwed that up both times in the first, first example. Um, we get that matrix. All right? By the way, really feel bad about that uh, little mess up, but I wanted to say that this is the technique that is most utilized when you're multiplying matrices together. That row 1 times column 1, row 1 times column 2, row 2 times, and so on, and so on, so on, and so on, and so on, and so on. So this sort of row-column expansion is the technique uh, that is mostly used when dealing with products of matrices. So I want you to utilize that same technique, that row-column expansion, to take a product of the following two matrices. You can see them there. Um, go ahead and do that, and obviously you're going to have to decide what sort of resulting matrix is going to look like and, and all of that. So push pause on the video and do that. All right, so hopefully you did that. Um, I'm going to show you how I would have done that. So first off, I would have said this first matrix is a 3 by 3 matrix. The second matrix has three rows and two columns. So they do match up in these middle numbers, 3 and 3. So those are going to be 
eliminated in my resulting matrix is going to be a 3 by 2 matrix. Okay? And so we're going to create a 3 by 2 matrix. And each of the entries is going to come from one row of matrix, what I'll call matrix A, times one column of matrix B. So let's take the 1, 1 entry. We're going to take first row times first column. That's going to be a 5 times 7 plus 4 times 4 plus 1 times 0. So again, 5 times 7, 4 times 4, 1 times 0. Think about rotating this row 90 degrees and multiplying each entry by the columns over here. Then we take 5, well, then we go to the next entry here. We're going to go 5 times 2, 4 times negative 3, 1 times 1. All right, then I go to row two. So row two is zero, eight, two, zero times seven, eight times four, two times zero. So zero times seven plus eight times four plus two times zero. Then I go to the, my next column over here, but still keep in the second row. So second row, second column, 0 times 2 plus 8 times negative 3 plus 2 times 1. And there we go. So 0 times 2, 8 times negative 3, 2 times 1. And then my last row. I'm going to get negative 2, whoops, negative 2 times 7 plus 6 times 4 plus 3 times 0. Last row, last column, negative 2 times 2 plus 6 times negative 3, plus 3 times 1, and there we go. Now, obviously, we're going to simplify this matrix um, best we can. As long as I don't have any screw-ups, uh, we should be good to go. All right, so 5 times 7 plus 4 times 4. So 5 times 7 plus 4 times 4. I'm just typing this into my calculator. Plus 1 times 0 gives me a 51. So that 1, 1 entry is the number 51. All right. We move on to our next. 5 times 2 is 10. So we're going 10 minus 12 plus 1. 10 minus 12 plus 1 is going to give me a negative 1. Over here, it's a little bit easier. 0 times 7 is 0. 2 times 0 is 0. It's always nice having zeros. So all we got is 8 times 4, which is 32. Similarly here, we can ignore that. 0 times 2 is 0. But we get 8 times negative 3, that's a negative 24, plus 2. So we get negative 22. Negative 2 times 7, that's negative 14, plus 24, plus 0, gives me a nice 10. So negative 4, excuse me, negative 14, plus 24 gives you a 10 plus 0 is nothing. And then lastly, I get negative 4 minus 18 plus 3. Okay, so negative 4 
minus 18 plus 3, which is going to give you a negative 19. All right. So again, the resulting product is this one. And notice how much quicker that is. Once you get the hang of it, it's a lot quicker to do things that way than to do things thinking about matrix times each vector. Okay, so doing the row column expansion is a really, um, really good trick for multiplying matrices. That is the technique that uh, we're going to do most often in here. And by the way, that's also why uh, I kind of left that mistake in. I was perfectly okay having that mistake in our previous uh, slides. All right. So I want you to take a pause on the video and try to multiply these two matrices. All right, so hopefully you uh, went ahead and did that. And if you do that, well, you're going to find out that it's not, it's going to kind of lead to a dead end, honestly. Because if you think about this matrix here, uh, this matrix, this first one, is a 3 by 2 matrix. We're going to multiply that by a 3 by 3 matrix. And all of a sudden, these middles don't match up. And because these middles don't match up, um, this is going to be an undefined scenario. So basically, you can't multiply these because the number of columns in your what I would call your A is not equal to the number of rows. So if you try to do a row column expansion, you'd start at 7 times 5 plus 2 times 0, and then you'd run out of terms. You couldn't multiply anything times this negative 2. So these middle numbers not matching up force this to be an undefined situation. Now, if you'll notice really quickly, this is undefined. But this, were, this was just our matrices from before in a different order. So 7, 4, 0, 2, negative 3, 1, that was my matrix B from before. 7, 4, 0, 2, negative 3, 1, that's my matrix A now. Okay, So basically, I just swapped A's and B's. One way to think about that is that in this case, Think about the first matrix is A times B. In the second case, it would be the matrix B times A. So one of them we can multiply because we match up in sizes. But if I reverse the order, all of a sudden I cannot multiply those two matrices. And this takes us, or this leads us, to probably the most important, what I'll call an unproperty in matrix multiplication, in that this is the this is the thing we always have to understand. When you multiply two matrices, order is important. Okay? Multiplying A times B in general does not get you the same thing as multiplying B times A. So while real numbers are commutative when we multiply them, matrix matrices are not commutative when we multiply them. OK, I'll repeat that. Matrices in general are not commutative when we multiply. OK, when we add, they are, but multiplication does not work that way. And it's a very important, it's probably the most important property of definitely of this section. But uh, I should say it's the most important non-property of this section. But uh, it's, it's very important in general. So we have, when, whenever you're multiplying matrix times matrix, 
you have to be really careful about the order that they're put in, okay? And by the way, that doesn't just work for matrices that are not defined, okay? So here's what I want you to do. We're going to take two matrices, and we're going to multiply them, but in different orders. Now, both of these are going to be two by two matrices, and so it's going to be every time two by two times another two by two. So the resulting matrix is going to be two rows and two columns, but I swap the order. So I want you to go ahead and do that. Push pause on the video. Use that row column expansion to, multi to do both of these multiplications. All right? So hopefully you went ahead and did that. Let me do that on my own too. Let's go to the Word document. I'm going to take the 3, 4, 5, 2 matrix. I'll put that one first, and I'll calculate that. So row expansion 3 times negative 1 plus 4 times 3. That'll be my first entry. Then 3 times 2 plus 4 times negative 6. Hopefully I'm writing all this down right. Then I go to my second row, 5, 2 times negative 1, 3. So 5 times negative 1 plus 2 times 3. And then lastly, we go 5 times 2 plus 2 times negative 6. And that'll be that last entry. Now, notice what we get here. I'm going to, well, I guess we can do this again. Um, so we're getting a 2 by 2 matrix. 3 times negative 1 plus 4 times 3. I think I got a 9 there. 3 times 2 plus 4 times negative 6. I think I got a negative 18 there. Again, double check all these that I've done them right. I will double check these in a second, but uh, let me finish up here. 5 times negative 1 plus 2 times 3. Got a 1. 5 times 2 plus 2 times negative 6. That's a negative 2. Okay, so that's what I got um, when I multiplied the matrices in that order. So let's go with the other order now. Um, similar way, oops, negative 1 times 3, negative 1 times 3 plus 2 times 5, negative 1 times 4, plus 2 times 2, then go to the second row, 3, negative 6 times 3, 5, so 3 times 3, plus negative 6 times 5, Oops. and then this last one is going to be 3 times 4, plus negative 6 times 2. And there we go. Again, we'll do this uh, quickly by hand. Hopefully I don't get any screw-ups. That's going to be negative 3 plus 10. I got a 7. It's going to be negative 4 plus 4. I got a 0. That's going to be 9 minus 30. I get a minus 21. And then I get a 12 minus 12, which is 0. All right? Now, again, both of these matrices, I, the order that I put them in 
when you multiplied, you got very different matrices at the end. Okay, one, if I multiplied, we'll call this first one A. If I multiplied A times B, my resulting matrix was 9, negative 18, 1, negative 2. And if I multiplied the B times A, we get 7, 0, negative 21, 0. So even that, though I can multiply in both directions, I am definitely not getting the same matrix as a result. Okay? So that just sort of double confirms what was on the previous slide and gives us a little bit more practice on that row-column expansion. So again, the very important property, when you multiply matrices, order matters, okay? Now, even though commutativity, commutativity breaks down with matrix multiplication, we do get some fairly nice rules associated with matrix multiplication. In particular, what you'll find out is that even though commutativity breaks down, we still get associativity. So if I multiply A times B times C, as long as they're in the same order, it doesn't matter which, which matrices I multiply first and which ones I multiply afterwards. Again, these are all for matrices of the correct size and scalars are. Same thing here. We still have, although we don't have commutativity, we do, we are able to distribute a multiplication in over addition in the way we'd want. Now again, notice that because A started on the left hand side, when I distribute it in and multiply times B, it's going to be on the left hand side of B. And the same thing, when I distribute it in and multiply times C, it's going to be on the left hand side of C. Okay? And in reverse, if the A started out on the right hand side, to use my distributive property, when I multiply by B, B is going to be, have to be on the left, A is going to be, have to be on the right. When I distribute, multiply times C, C is going to be on the left, A is going to be on the right. Scalar multiplication works really nicely with matrix multiplication. Order really doesn't matter there. In fact, scalars, you can, scalar multiplication is commutative, so scalars can be pulled in and pulled out as long as A stays on the left-hand side and B stays on the right-hand side. You can put that scalar anywhere you want. And then our last property on this page has to deal with that identity matrix. It says that the identity matrix times A will always be A. And A times the identity matrix will always be A. Now, notice there's a little bit of uh, different subscripts there because, again, if you're multiplying on the left, you might need a certain size identity matrix. And if you're multiplying on the right, you might need a different size identity matrix. Okay. In fact, let me demonstrate that property, which is some arbitrary matrix A of what we're saying. So let's go and take an arbitrary matrix A. Now, this matrix is a 2 by 3 matrix. And so if you're going to multiply times the identity and you're going to put the identity on your left, well, the matrix you're going to need as far as the identity goes, is a 2 by 2 identity matrix, okay? Remember what the identity matrix was? 1's on the diagonal, zeros elsewhere, okay? Notice what that's going to do. We get a 2 by 2 times 2 by 3. We're going to end up with a 2 by 3 matrix as our outcome. And really nicely, I'll... Uh, I'll do this for the first couple, and then I won't write it down anymore. But if I row column expand, I'm going to get 1 times 4 plus 0 times 7 as my first entry. And then I'm going to get 1 times 5 plus 0 times 8, 1 times 6 
plus 0 times 9. Notice what's happening there. 1 times anything is itself. 0 times anything is 0. So all we're getting, and you can show that this has to be the case in every time, is you're just getting back the first row. Same thing here, 0 times 4 plus 1 times 7. 1 times anything is itself. 0 times anything is 0. 0 plus anything is that thing. And you can go through 0 times 5, 1 plus times 8, you get an 8. 0 times 6, 1 times 9, you get a 9. Okay. Now, if you were going to take this same matrix and you were going to multiply it on the right times an identity matrix, well, an identity matrix on the right is going to need three rows and three columns. Again, identity matrix has to be square in our case. So it's going to have to look like this. One's on the diagonal, zero's elsewhere. And if you think about row expanding this, four times one, five times zero, six times zero. So that's only picking up a four in the one, one entry. If I do the same thing, first row, but second column, all you're going to pick up is the 5. And then first row, third column, all you're going to pick up is the 6. So you're getting back again, 4, 5, 6. In the top row, and 7, 8, 9 in the second row. All right? So that's what's going on with that last property. Identity, mat identity matrix times anything is the matrix itself. By the way, the identity matrix is kind of like the one in the real numbers. One times any number is itself. So the identity matrix is kind of is the identity matrix under multiplication. That's kind of serving as our number one in the real numbers. The number one is the identity number when in numerical multiplication. All right. Now, a couple um, of the, the row column expansion was a big part of this section. A couple of other parts are not going to be quite as big, but just I want you to conceptually know these. The first is the power of a matrix. The power of a matrix is exactly what you'd think it would be. It's A multiplied times itself a bunch of times. All right? Now, if you think about this, in order for this to even make sense, if K is more than 1, is to have the number of rows and the number of columns be the same. Okay? So, because this needs to sort of match up always, the number of rows and columns need to be the same. So you can only take powers of matrices which are square, which are 2 by 2 or 3 by 3 or 4 by 4 or 5 by 5 um, in dimension. Okay? But just take A multiplying it by itself. So why don't you just go ahead and try that? Try to take A to the third power. And we're utilizing the A, which is 3, 4, 5, 2. Go ahead and push pause on the video. All right, hopefully you went ahead and did that. Um, I am going to, oops, there we go. So what we do is we take this A and we multiply it by itself and then we multiply it by itself. All right, so A to the third is A times another A times another A. 
Okay. Now you kind of do this and it doesn't matter which, again, associativity we have, we don't have commutativity. So if you want to multiply matrix this first by the second matrix and then multiply, or if you want to multiply the second and the third and then multiply, it doesn't matter. Okay. It doesn't matter order of uh, which multiplication we do first. It does matter what order I place the matrices in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that first two and multiply them. And if you do, you're going to get out a two by two matrix, as you probably would have imagined. And then whatever you get as your result, you're going to multiply by that last matrix, three, four, five, two. So let's row, column, expand um, the first two matrices. So three times three plus four times five. First row, first column. First row, second column, three times four plus four times two. Go on to the second row, five times three plus two times five. And then second row, second column, five times four. plus two times two, and there we go. All right, so we're gonna simplify that. Um, that first entry, I believe, is a 29. This second entry here, or I should say the, the one one entry is a 29. Uh, we're getting 12 plus eight, which becomes a 20 in my row one, column two. In my row two, column one, I get 15 plus 10, that's 25. Here, we get 20 plus four, that's a 24. Now, those are big numbers, but again, that's fine. Perfectly legitimate numbers to be dealing with. And then after I multiply these first two, then we're gonna multiply this first one times the second one. So we'll go ahead and do that um, right now. All right, 29 times 3 plus 20 times 5. We're going to get out some big numbers here. That's fine. But again, row 1, column 1. Row 1, column 2, 29 times 4 plus 20 times 2. Row 2, column 1, 25 times 3, plus 24 times 5. And then row 2, column 2, 25 times 4, plus 24 times 2. And there we have it. Okay. Now, again, these are going to be big numbers. I'm just going to type these into my calculator. and figure out what they come out to 29 times 3 plus 20 times 5 is going to give me 187 all right i did 29 times 4 plus 20 times 2 i got 150 Six twenty five times three plus twenty four times five gives me one ninety five and twenty four this should be twenty five times four plus twenty four times two gives me one forty eight. Again, hopefully I did that correctly. Um, I'm going to double check now real quick. And it seems like everything is in order. Again, 
makes me nervous when I try to do that in my head. Um, but that's what it is. Okay, utilize your calculator, get uh, get what you get there. So that's what raising to a power means. All right, raising to a power just means multiplying it by itself that many times. Now, only whole number powers would make sense right now. Okay, you know you won't you won't ever multiply a matrix or take a matrix to the 3.5 power. That really doesn't make sense in um, sense of the matrices. We will eventually get into negatives, but uh, not. We'll do that in the next section. All right. But whole number positives, you should know how to take exponents of a matrix. Now here's our last thing. This is going to be a very um, light subject for us. We're not going to talk lots about the transpose, but it does come up in the book quite a bit. But basically what it, the transpose of a matrix is, is it's what you get when you interchange the rows and the columns. So if you take entry IJ, now that's going to become entry JI. And we denote it kind of the same way we do with powers, but it's A to the exponent capital T, right? So that is the notation for the transpose of A. Now, let's take and do the transpose of the following matrices. I'll show you this. There's really not a whole lot to, to do here. Oops, excuse me. So take these two matrices, and now we're going to create the transpose of each. So if we call this one A, well, the transpose, since we have two rows and three columns, we're going to switch that up. And we're going to create a situation where we have two columns and three rows. And this first row, notice it'd be the 1-1 one, one entry, will stay at the 1-1 one, one entry. The 1-2 one, entry will go down to the 2-1 entry. The 1-3 entry will go down to the 3-1 entry. So basically, I take my first row, and instead of putting it as in as a row, I do the column. Instead of going row number two, I'm just going to write column number two. All right. So these are, well, this is the transpose of this matrix. Again, just swap rows and columns. Okay. Now, if we have a square matrix, that's not going to change anything. Although it is going to say, hey, if I have three rows and three columns, I'm still going to have three rows and three columns. But 8, 2, 5 is my first row is going to be changed to 8, 2, 5 is my first column. Negative 4, negative 2, negative 3 as my second row is going to be changed to a negative 4, negative 2, negative 3, excuse me. I misspoke. Negative 4, negative 2, 3 as my second column. And then 0, 9, 7. If I'm going to go transpose. I'm going to go 0, 9, 7 in the last column. So this 8, negative 4, 0, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, is the transpose of the matrix above it. OK? So that's how we do transposes. Now. There are a couple of things about transposes that are neat that can come up and help us later. So in order to at least have a baseline of what to deal with later, I did want to make sure you knew this. First note is that if you swap the rows and columns, and then you swap the rows and columns again, you're back to where you started with. Okay, so the transpose of a transpose 
is back to where he started with. Also, if you added and then swapped the rows and columns, well, you could have swapped rows and columns, swapped rows and columns, and then added. All right, so the transpose, in a sense, distributes over addition. It won't matter if I multiply a scalar before or after the transpose. No big deal. Now, this one is kind of the tricky one, this fourth one. If you're multiplying two matrices, remember that we're going to row expand A and then multiply times the column of B. Well, after you do that, if you swap the rows and columns, then what's going to happen is that you're going to have to swap the order. Okay, again, the row of matrix A is going to be, so row one of matrix A is going to be column one of A transpose. And column one of matrix B is going to be row one of B transpose. So if you're dealing with transpose under multiplications, we have the switching of the ordering going around. All right. So those are notes. Again, we don't deal a whole lot with transpose, but you should be able to actually find the transpose of a matrix. If I take this matrix and ask you for the transpose, you should be able to do that. If I take this matrix, ask you for the transpose, you'll, you should be able to do that. Last thing, I, very last thing I want to do in this section is I want to just add a little bit of bonus time. Okay, so hopefully you didn't click off. Hopefully that didn't that didn't uh, go. This is the little bonus, all right? So we're going to go all the way back to matrix multiplication. We have three, four, five, two, negative one, two, three, negative six. It turns out that if you get if you want to sort of check your own work, um, and you don't want to row expand then you can utilize your matrix or excuse me your calculator to do matrix multiplication all right so that's what we're going to do in the bonus we're going to actually do this but same problem but through our calculators so scroll up to the, your calculators mine remember we did that earlier what we can do is we can input those two matrices. One into matrix A. So that was a two by two matrix. And the matrix we had was three, four, five, two, three, four, five, two. Okay. Then we go and edit matrix B. Now, matrix B was a, again, a two by two matrix, and it was negative one, two, three, negative six. Negative one, two, oops, eight, I apologize. Negative one, two, three, negative six. All right, so we go back, and I'll go back to the home screen here. We go to our matrix. If I wanted to figure out matrix A times matrix B, pretty straightforward calculation. Put in your matrix, put in just the regular times, and then your other matrix. Notice 9, negative 18, 1, negative 2. That's what uh, I ended up with. And if we reverse the order, we can just do that by saying, well, now that we have our matrices in here, let's take matrix B and then multiply. Again, it's just a normal multiply key times matrix 
a. And we get 7, 0, negative 21, 0. So you notice that that's a good way to check your work. Now, on the homework, it's perfectly fine to utilize your calculator and do all that kind of stuff. On the test, I am going to have a couple of matrices that you should be able to, like, um, do the column, excuse me, do the row column expansion on. So I may give you a matrix, which, matrix A, which is like, um, has variables in it or something like this. And you'll have to do the row column expansion of that. And B may have some variables too. Okay, but as far as like normal everyday use, if you have numerical values of your matrices, you can go ahead and use your calculator. Now, one other problem that we utilized or that we solved was this one. We'd say, Take this A, 3, 4, 5, 2. In fact, that's the exact same A that we've already plugged into our calculator. All right, that was on purpose. So what we can do is we can calculate A to the third very quickly. Oops. By just going back to the calculator going into the matrix menu, doing A, and then doing my caret 3, just like a normal exponent, hit enter, and all of a sudden I got the exact same matrix that I got that I had um, when I did it out by hand. Okay? So the when you're multiplying matrices, um, this can really cut down on your time. And by the way, it is also going to recognize if for some reason you put in like a 3 by 4 matrix. Let's just put in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11, 12, okay, in for matrix B, and you asked your calculator to multiply matrix A times matrix B, and you hit enter, your calculator is going to say an error because it was a dimension mismatch. So what that tells you is that A and B were not the right sizes in order for you to actually multiply those two matrices. All right? So you can kind of explore um, what's going on there and do all kinds of stuff. All right? So a lot of, a lot of uh, things happen in the matrix menu. By the way, if you go to your matrix menu, go math, notice there's this capital T here. That obviously is for transpose. So if you go down to that T, uh, this is the A I had in there earlier. And notice what it did. I used to have 3, 4, 5, 2. Now my first row has become my first column. My second row has become my second column. All right? So, again, your calculator has the ability to multiply matrices. It has the ability to do exponents. It has the ability to do transposes if you want it to. And again, it's a good check. I will say there are going to be a, a situation, there is going to be at least one problem on the test we're going to ask you to multiply like a 2 by 2 times another 2 by 2. And instead of this being 3, 4, 5, 2, this is going to say like 3, C, 5, uh, E. And then this one will have variables. So you'll have to sort of understand how to do the row column expansion by hand. 
But again, if you have numerical values, you can go ahead and use your calculator if you'd like. All right. So that is it for chapter two. Again, the or chapter two, section one. Sorry, not the whole chapter. So that is it for sh chapter two, section one. Uh, the basic matrix operations. And then in section two, we're going to go on to this matrix operations, and we're going to focus still on matrix multiplication. Matrix multiplication is the real big operation that we're going to be interested in. All right, so we'll see you in 2-2.